China's economic crisis is escalating like never before, and anxiety prevails in Zhongnanhai. The whole network is shocked. China's unfinished houses outnumber unsold ones by 20 times. Doomsday Carnival. China's stock market is terrifying. China's cement industry has suffered a historic loss, and its output has hit a 13-year low. China's economy is in a serious recession, with a wave of bankruptcies, unemployment, and business closures sweeping across most economic sectors. Faced with this significant threat, Xi Jinping and senior leaders of the Chinese Communist Party held an extraordinary meeting on September 26, announcing a series of so-called economic rescue plans. Following the heavy economic stimulus measures announced by the People's Bank of China, the Financial Regulatory Bureau, and the China Securities Regulatory Commission on September 24, the Chinese Communist Party held another Politburo meeting on September 26, pledging to deploy necessary fiscal expenditures, even going so far as to spend money directly. Today, many regions have followed up with relevant specific measures, Shanghai and Shenzhen to fully lift purchase restrictions. On September 27, Reuters, citing four sources familiar with the matter, exclusively reported that Shanghai and Shenzhen will announce the lifting of the remaining restrictions on home purchases in the coming weeks. This includes easing restrictions on non-local residents buying homes and lifting limits on the number of homes local residents can purchase. In addition to core areas like Xicheng and Dongcheng, Beijing is also reportedly considering similar measures. These two districts are Beijing's political center. Over the past year, most Chinese cities have completely lifted real estate purchase restrictions. Some believe these measures contradict Xi Jinping's previous vow to focus on houses for living, not speculation. Mr. Xi is currently very worried upon realizing that the Chinese economy is like a train going downhill without brakes. The economic recession could lead to potential internal political instability that Mr. Xi does not want. According to a report by Radio Free Asia, the total debt of Chinese local governments stands at approximately 91.2 trillion yuan. The whole network is shocked. China's unfinished houses outnumber unsold ones by 20 times. Liu Ting, chief economist of Nomura Securities China, said while analyzing the current situation of China's real estate market that the guarantee delivery of houses policy, ensuring that Chinese real estate developers deliver houses, should take precedence over the government's current policy of buying existing houses to reduce inventory because the number of houses that developers have sold but not completed is 20 times that of houses that are completed but not sold. This published data shocked the media. On September 28th, the highly anticipated Tsinghua PBC Chief Economist Forum was held in Beijing. The forum brought together many well-known economists and financial industry leaders from home and abroad to discuss the challenges facing the Chinese economy. Liu Ting, Chief Economist of Nomura Securities China, thoroughly analyzed the current situation of China's real estate market. He said that the most significant pressure on China's economic downturn in recent years came from the real estate sector. Solving the problem of clearing the real estate market is the key to current economic stability and development. Among these, guaranteeing the delivery of houses should be prioritized, even surpassing the importance of stockpiling. Liu Ting cited Country Garden's data as an example stating that Country Garden has built but not sold about 36,000 houses, while the number of houses that have been sold but not yet completed has reached 730,000, and the number of houses under construction but not yet sold is 350,000. The ratio between the three is about 1 to 20 to 10. Faced with such data, should our policy address this one, that is, the houses that have been built but not sold, or should it target the 20, that is, the houses that have been sold but not yet completed. Liu Ting raised this sharp question. His answer is that the policy should focus on solving those houses that have been sold 
but not yet completed, meaning giving priority to solving the guaranteed delivery of houses. The Politburo meeting of the CPC Central Committee on September 26th proposed for the first time that it is necessary to promote the real estate market to stop falling and stabilize. Liu Ting said in his speech, only by clearing the market and rebuilding confidence can the real estate market stop falling and stabilize. Liu Ting said that the main problem facing the current real estate market is the market failure and government failure under the pre-sale system. To rebuild market confidence and order, the confidence issue must be solved, ensuring home buyers are certain they will receive their houses. Only by letting home buyers see the actual houses can their confidence in the real estate market be gradually restored. To achieve this goal, Liu Ting estimated that the government would need to invest about 3 trillion yuan to solve the problem of guaranteed delivery of houses. But Liu Ting believes that this huge expenditure is necessary to solve the current predicament of the real estate market. The money would mainly be used to ensure that the houses sold, but not yet completed, can be successfully completed and delivered to the home buyers. Guaranteed delivery of housing refers to the previously proposed guaranteed delivery of buildings policy, which means ensuring that the houses can be completed and delivered to avoid unfinished buildings. The specific measure is the real estate whitelist mechanism promoted earlier this year, allowing commercial banks to lend to projects on the whitelist. On April 30th this year, the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee first proposed the term guaranteed delivery of housing. According to a recent report by Bloomberg Intelligence, based on pre-sale data from 2015 to the first half of this year, at least 48 million pre-sold houses in China have not been completed, indicating that China's real estate crisis will not be resolved anytime soon. Doomsday Carnival? China's stock market is terrifying. According to a report by the Financial Times on September 29th, statistics from Wind Data show that in just four days, the market value of A shares soared from 74.98 trillion to 84.86 trillion yuan, with a net increase of about 10 trillion yuan over this period, averaging 47,000 yuan per stockholder. On the eve of National Day, China's stock market experienced a strange surge, described by investors as moving from ICU, intensive care unit, to KTV. Chinese securities firms also use the term account opening like a tide to describe the surge in the number of new accounts in recent days. Wang He, an expert on China issues, told reporters, because China's stock market has been falling for a long time, many people have lost money and think they can take this opportunity to make up for their losses. This created a sudden craze, which is very abnormal. People who take risks are tempted by the desire for money and lose their reason. He added, aren't there many new accounts now? The leaks are coming in waves. But for those who have been trapped for a long time, this is the biggest opportunity. After this surge, there is a high probability of another stock market crash. So the current surge makes those who understand the Chinese stock market feel scared. Wang He stated that the CCP's market support plan appears strong on the outside, but is weak on the inside and is facing a huge financial crisis. The central bank's policy was issued under political pressure, lacking internal sustainability or economic logic. Those financial tycoons on Wall Street think it is best not to engage with the CCP's stock market. No matter how low prices fall, they will not enter, as the uncontrollable risks are too great and the overall outlook is very bleak and dark. Therefore, it is normal for China to cash out and significantly reduce its holdings. China's cement industry has suffered a historic loss, and its output has hit a 13-year low. According to data from the China Building Materials Federation, the total profit of the cement industry in the first half of 2024 was minus 1.15 billion yuan, and the loss rate of enterprises exceeded 50%. A research report from the China Cement Big Data Research Institute pointed out that the national cement output in the first half of the year was 850 million tons, a year-on-year -year decrease of 10.76% in all calibers, marking a new low since 2011. In terms of efficiency, the industry suffered a historic loss due to the sharp drop in cement prices, and a decline in demand. 
The report shows that there are 20 cement-listed companies that have disclosed their first-half performance, including six on the Hong Kong stock market and 14 on the Shanghai and Shenzhen stock markets. The overall performance of these 20 listed cement companies is bleak. In terms of revenue, except for Huaxin Cement and Ningxia Building Materials, which achieved growth, the other 18 companies all experienced declines. Among them, seven companies saw a decline of more than 30%, mainly Conch Cement, Asia Cement, and Wanyanking. While revenues are declining across the board, nearly half of the listed cement companies are losing money. The report shows that in terms of net profit attributable to the parent company, 11 companies are profitable, while nine companies are losing money, and the profits of the profitable companies have all declined. The profits of Western Cement, Tapai Group, and Qingsong Construction Chemicals range between 200 million and 400 million yuan, with Qingsong Construction Chemicals profits falling by less than 20%, indicating a relatively small decline. Li Kunming of the Cement Big Data Research Institute analyzed that in the first half of 2024, due to the continued bottoming out of real estate investment and the slowdown in infrastructure investment, cement demand continued to decline. The market competition remains fierce, and cement prices are running at a low level. The industry as a whole presents the operating characteristics of shrinking demand, fierce competition, low prices, and operating losses. Prices fell continuously in the first quarter, and after entering the second quarter, the peak season was not prosperous, and demand continued to weaken. China's financial system is in chaos, as thousands of financial executives resign en masse. China is currently facing immense economic pressure, and many believe that a financial crisis could break out at any time. In just over a month, more than 1,100 executives of listed companies have resigned, most of them from the financial sector. Meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party authorities have been more aggressive than ever in their efforts to clean up the financial system. Some former officials within the Chinese Communist Party system believe that the elite class controlling the financial lifeline is most sensitive to the market. Their wave of resignations indicates a collapse in their confidence in China's financial system. The CSI 300 index, which reflects the overall performance of China's stock market, has dropped nearly 7% this year, marking an unprecedented fourth consecutive year of decline. It is now approaching the lows seen in early 2019. On Friday, September 13th, the CSI 300 index closed at 3,159 points setting a new stage low. As China's stock market continues to decline, listed companies are experiencing a wave of executive resignations. According to incomplete statistics, since August, A-share listed companies have issued over 1,100 resignation notices, with most coming from executives of financial institutions. Notable executive resignations from banks include, on August 25th, Liu Jin resigned from his positions as Vice Chairman, Executive Director, Member of the Board of Directors Strategic Development Committee, and President of the Bank of China for personal reasons. On August 18th, Zhang Rongsen also resigned from his roles as Executive Director and President of Jishang Bank for personal reasons. On August 17th, Wang Feng stepped down from his position as Vice President of Zhang Yin Bank due to a work transfer. On August 1st, Wu Tiejun resigned as vice president of Changshu Bank, also due to a work transfer. In the insurance industry, on September 6th, China Life Insurance Group announced that Wang Tingke resigned from his positions as executive director, chairman, and chairman of the Board of Directors Strategy and Investment Committee. On August 28th, Liu Xiaodan submitted his resignation to the Board of Directors of China Pacific Insurance Group, resigning as Independent Director and Chairman of the Board of Directors Nomination and Remuneration Committee. On August 27th, Pan Yanhong stepped down as Chairman and Director of Taiping Life Insurance, a subsidiary of Pacific Insurance Holdings. In the securities industry, there have been many personnel changes as well. On September 6th, Huang Weijian, General Manager of Kaitong Securities, retired. Chang Yifeng, 
an executive at Hualien Securities, resigned the same day. On August 30th, Wu Jian, chairman of Southwest Securities, retired, as did Zhu Hong Hao and Wen Lan, directors at BOC Securities. Zhu Xiban, secretary of the board of directors of Zhong Yuan Securities, also retired. On August 28th, Zhang Guoming, compliance director and chief risk officer of Citic Securities, retired. On August 27th, Shang Jian, deputy general manager and secretary of the board of directors of Cinda Securities, resigned. Resignations have also occurred in large state-owned enterprises, SOES. On September 6th, Wang Lixin applied to the board of directors of China Railway Construction to resign from his positions as executive director, president, and member of the board of directors strategy and investment committee. On August 27th, Dong Zhenghe resigned as director and chairman of Sinopharm Modern, and Lian Wanyang resigned as director and president of Sinopharm Modern. On August 24th, Liu Jin stepped down as chairman, director, and chairman of the board of directors strategy committee of China Gold Corporation. One particularly notable case occurred on August 26th, when high-end machinery manufacturer Valen Precision announced that its president, Sheng Min, Chairman Luo Xu and Financial Director and Vice President Zhang Genhong all resigned simultaneously. Du Wen, a former Chinese Communist Party official now living in the United States, told the Epoch Times on September 13th that the intensive resignations of senior executives are a sign of the impending collapse of China's financial system. Du Wen, Formerly the deputy director of the Legal Advisory Office of Inner Mongolia's Legislative Affairs Office and dean of the Institute of Law and Sociology, attributes the wave of resignations to a combination of high-pressure anti-corruption efforts, increased financial system risks, political power shifts, and the economic downturn. He argues that these executives foresee a looming systemic crisis and are choosing to exit while they still can. Faced with increasing political pressure and economic decline, these executives understand that China's economy is at a dead end, with the financial system being one of the core pillars of this ailing system, Duwen said. They likely know that the institutions they serve are financial volcanoes that could erupt at any moment. Staying in their positions will not only fail to protect them, but could also make them targets of the next round of anti-corruption investigations. As Duwen points out, these elites, who control the financial lifelines, are highly sensitive to market signals and have likely detected deep-rooted crises such as local debt, real estate bubbles, shadow banking, and the repayment crisis. Their resignations are likely an attempt to absolve themselves of responsibility and avoid becoming scapegoats when the financial system eventually collapses. Think about it. If even their own people are rushing to leave, it suggests that internal power struggles may have spiraled out of control, and the chain of interests is collapsing. Their flight shows that the total collapse of the financial system is just a matter of time. This is undeniably the beginning of an irreversible systemic financial crisis. China's economic system is heading into an even deeper abyss, Duen concluded.